Yeah, morning uh, lecture 20. We start with a new chapter. Linear extensions, polytopes, and counting. This will cover the next uh, three lectures until uh, Christmas break. So uh, the first section here is poset polytopes, and we start with the order polytope. And uh, we, we start with a very general view on, on, the, on this object. Um, so an order homomorphism is a an order preserving map between posets P and Q. And uh, the, the homomorphism uh, thing is that you, if you have x uh, greater equal y in P, then you should have the same kind of relation for the images in Q. And now uh, the, the order polytope of P can, can be defined as the set of homomorphisms from P into the interval 0, 1. And, uh, and this is clearly a subset of R to the x. Uh, maybe you prefer to think of a finite poset. Um, yes, and this is a compact convex set. Compact. So X is a concept of P. Convex. Uh, so in fact, it is a, actually it is even a polytope. Sure, as, as usual, uh, we have P equals Yes, uh, well, this is a very, very uh, general, very, uh, we, we, can, we can do this more, uh, more down to earth. We can write the order polytope uh, as the set of uh, vectors. They will be in 0, 1 to the, to the x. And the property is, that, uh, that these vectors represent homomorphisms. So x uh, less equal y implies that the coordinate of x is less equal to the coordinate of y. Now uh, here we have here we have a subset of a real space which is defined by by half spaces. Uh, it's an intersection of half spaces, so now it's it's obvious that we are talking about a polytope and uh, or a polyhedra, but because we we have this property in addition, it's bounded and uh, and it's a polytope. Now um, we we are going to address two questions first about this polytope. The first question is. What are the facets? The second question will be what are the the corners of the polytope. So let's look at the at the uh, at the facets for first. If you look at the inequalities, then we have uh, then we have inequalities of type zero less then Vx, we have inequalities of type Vx is less or equal to 1, and we have the, uh, these inequalities for x less equal to 1. Now, which of them are needed? Uh, if, I, if I bound the minima and I have the, these relations, then, then everything is positive. So, this kind of thing is only needed. What are the uh, essential 
inequalities. So the zero less equal vx is only needed for x in the minima of p. And uh, dually, the vx less equal 1 is only needed for x in the maximal elements of p. And uh, moreover, if you, if you have the, the order relations for the covers, then everything else is given by transitivity. So uh, it is enough to have vx less equal vy or xy a cover. <coughs> and now we can we can simplify it. So this is the complete list of essential inequalities. These are the these are the facets of the polytope. And we can describe them in a in a cleaner way. So uh, so we define an order p hat by uh, attaching a zero and a one. So maybe maybe I give you a picture. This is P and now I have a I have a new global one which is above everything and a new global zero which is below everything. So this is this is the P hat. And now uh, Now we we also take uh, the ground set of P to be N. We are going to be, to use these two things interchangeably throughout the lecture. Um, and now now we define uh, O hat of P, and and this is. Now the vectors v0, v1, up to vn plus 1 uh, with v0 equals 0, vn plus 1 equals 1, and uh, yeah, and the relation vx plus uh, vi plus equal vj if and only if i j is a cover. And uh, yeah, so this is this is now a subset of zero times zero one to the n times times one and the and the interesting part, the part here is the order polytope. And uh, and on, on this object here, so this uh, is actually equal to zero, let's do it again, times O of P times one. And the, the nice thing is that for, for using Using this, we have a we, we get a, a unified description of the of the facets of the of the order polytope. In fact, uh, facets of O of P are the cover relations. of the p hat and, and we are going to use this uh, this o hat of p uh, in the in the following yeah so um, now we now we understand the facets maybe the the most uh, interesting thing about the 
about the order polytope is its relations to the linear extensions of P. And uh, so we, we start with looking at a generic point uh, V in O of P. And um, so generic means that that we are not in a special position, and the special position would be if two of the coordinates are the same. So, so they are all different. And if they are all different, we can sort them. Uh, so there exists uh, pi in this n such that we have pi the coordinate pi 1 is less than the coordinate pi 2 is less than the on coordinate pi n. And now this is a, a ordering of the of the points, induces an ordering of the points, or is it the pi is an ordering of the points and it respects uh, it has these inequalities and looking looking at this here, it's clear that this pi must be a linear extension. Uh, pi is a linear extension of P. So in and and uh, an easy easy dual observation. So here we start with a point and we identify uh, permutation, a linear extension. We can also do the converse. We start with some linear extension. So this L of P, the set of linear extensions, we get something here. Now this, this pi is a total order. A total order is an order, so it has an order polytope. And of course, the order polytope is a subset of the order polytope of P. And, um, and since every generic point induces a pi, and this, this point is in the order polytope of pi, and we immediately see that uh, O of P is the union of O of pi with pi in an extension of P. Now, this is not this is not really a disjoint union, but uh, but almost almost disjoint. Union. Uh, actually, if we look at if we look at two permutations and we look at their order polytopes and we look at the intersection, then this is a subset is a subset is a subset of the hyperplanes of the braid arrangement. Uh, well, I, I explain. <coughs> is a subset of the union of Hij, where uh, Hij is a hyperplane with the points having i's coordinate equal to j coordinate. And yeah, so this union is this uh, defines the the braid arrangement and and the intersection of two of these uh, order polytopes of linear extension is in this is in this. Now, when we go to volumes, then uh, the volume of the intersection of these hyperplanes with a unit cube. Is a is a set of volume zero, so the essential the essential volumes are the volumes of these guys, 
and we obtain the, the very uh, nice and central equation that the order polytope has a volume which is equal to the sum of the linear extensions of P, the volume of the order polytope of the linear extension. This is uh, the, maybe the equation which makes the order polytope very interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, not, not very unexpectedly, the volumes here, the volumes of the different linear extensions of order polytopes of different linear extensions, they are all the same. And this is subject of our first lemma here. for all phi and sigma, not just linear extensions, this is all permutations. Um, yeah, and the, and the proof is, is easy. We look at, uh, we consider the permutation matrix Uh, A sigma times pi to the minus one. So this is taking this is taking a vector which is sorted sorted according to pi, and it's the first thing is we are sorting them in the order uh, v one up to v n, and then we shuffle them by sigma, so this is a map from O of pi to O of sigma. And, uh, and it's bijective. After all, this is a, this is a permutation matrix. matrix. Uh, it's bijective, it's linear and uh, the determinant of a permutation matrix is equal to the sign of the corresponding permutation so this is equal to plus or minus one and uh, this means that this map is order uh, is, is volume preserving Yeah, and, and that's it. We have a bijective map between the two, which is order, which is volume preserving, and uh, so this these two uh, sets have the same volume. And now, what what is the volume? This is also very easy. The volume of O of pi is equal to 1 over n factorial for all pi in Sn. And, uh, and the proof is the proof is uh, just one line. The volume 
the volume of 0, 1 to the n is equal to 1, uh, the n-dimensional volume here, and, uh, and 0, 1 to the n is equal to the order polytope of the uh, anti-chain, and this is a union of the order polytopes where the union is taken over all permutations, and these are n factorial, and uh, each of and they all have the same volume. So from this we from this we get the claim. Each of them has has a one over n factorial fraction of the total volume of this of this cube. Okay. Uh, and and from these two lemmas and from the from the statement here, we we get our first theorem. And uh, this is just the volume of the order polytope is equal to and now I introduce a new notation e of p divided by n factorial and this e of p is the number of linear extensions of p good uh, so this this theorem uh, it is doing something, something nice. It it connects a combinatorial entity, a number here, uh, to a geometric entity, the volume of some polytope. And uh, so so now we can we can use combinatorial arguments and apply them to geometry, or we can we can find some results in geometry and apply them to the combinatorial thing. And, and this uh, will be the, the thing that we that we the, the line that we follow in the next uh, in this lecture, and we will meet it in, in the next in the coming lectures as well. And and this has is a success story. So one one of the first uh, important results in this direction is. It was shown that computing the number of linear extensions of an order is a p-space complete problem. Uh, no. Sorry, it's a counting problem. It's a sharp p complete problem. Uh, and this was the first hardness result for computing the volume of, of polytopes. Uh, so this had a had an interesting application in this direction, and we will see direction uh, implications in the other direction soon. Okay, but uh, yeah, I announced at the beginning that we are going to study the the facets and the corners of the order polytope. So let's let's go for the corners. Um, Just announce the result. The corners of the order polytope are the characteristic vectors of upsets. So, so the proof 
has two directions. We start with an upset. Now the characteristic vector uh, introduced notation uh, will be denoted as E up U and, uh, and this is simply the vector which has a 1 at now we need a coordinate if I is an element of U and 0 if I is not an element of U. This is this characteristic vector and uh, well if you if you think of it this respects the order relations this is just the definition of an upset so this is an element of the order polytope but it's a zero one vector so it's a it's a corner of the cube and therefore it's a corner of the order point. So every upset induces a corner of the order polytope and now the the second step is to show that there is no no additional there are no additional corners of the order polytope. And uh, what we what we do here is we uh, we look at a vector, and here here we have it, O hat of p. So it's a vector starting with v zero equals zero and ending with v n plus one equal one. Uh, And uh, yeah, now now there exists a, a pi such that v pi zero, and we want that the that the pi zero uh, is equal to the to the to zero, and the pi n plus one is equal to uh, yeah n plus one. And we have the we have the relations okay and now what we what we do here is we define a sequence of upsets on the basis of of pi actually and uh, and then each of these upsets has a corresponding characteristic vector and we show that V can be written as a convex combination of these uh, characteristic vectors. So it is... V0 is 1? Uh, same. This was... Yeah, so uh, here is the definition of uj, this is just the the postfix of this permutation of this linear extension and uh, yeah, now now we have this is this is a a postfix and and we want to sum up these these characteristic vectors with some weights and, and the weight we need to to uh, get everybody uh, with the with the correct weight is that we that we take this uj with a weight of uh, pi j minus v pi j minus 1. Now this is a bit smaller and, and this is a bit larger and the difference is taken on this 
on this part. And this uh, sum is going from 1 to n plus 1. And uh, yeah, so what we what we what we do here basically is we take we take uh, the slices and and here the sum is is vj. Okay. Uh, so it is. You can you can check that it is vj for each uh, for each j. So this is equal to to v. Uh, and now what we what we have if we call this uh, lambda j. And we clearly have that the lambda j is a dumb negative because we have sorted the, the uh, coordinates. And the second thing that we observe is that the sum of the lambda j's, now if you forget about this and just look at this, and, and this is a, a telescope sum where everybody comes with a plus and a minus sign except for, for the last one. Uh, which is the n plus one, which is just one. Uh, actually, here the the other one, which is which only comes one, is a pi zero. So this is one minus zero. This is one. So we have a we have a convex combination uh, describing of the of the upset characteristic vectors which gives uh, the u uh, the v good uh, now that's it for the moment for the with respect to the order polytope but if you look at the title here it says polytopes so there's another one to come and this is the chain polytope. Now, uh, what is the chain polytope? Let me just give you the definition. The chain polytope of P is the set of R plus to the n uh, non-negative vectors with the property that uh, if you take the vector, transpose it and multiply it by the characteristic vector of a chain, and this is at most one, and this is true for all C chain of P. So for every chain, we have an inequality. And uh, yeah, let us let us look at the at the structure here. Well, of course, uh, the, the facets can be described by by chains, and uh, maybe in addition by the by the non-negativity constraints. So these these are the facets and now let's look at the at the corners. The corners will again be the uh, characteristic vectors and this time it's characteristic vectors of anti-chains. Yeah, I'm not sure if this space will, will be enough. Let's try. Um, okay, so the corners of 
of chain polytope are the characteristic vectors of antichains of P. And here's a, here's a remark. There is a bijection between uh, antichains and upsets. So you can take an antichain and you take the upset defined by the antichain, or you take an upset and you take the antichain of minima of the upset. This is a bijection. So uh, from the two propositions, we immediately get that the two polytopes have the same number of corners. O of P and C of P have the same number of corners. And we will see that they share more properties. Uh, okay, so so let's let's start. So as in the previous proof we first show that the claimed corners are indeed corners and then we show that they that they are sufficient to span everything. And uh, yeah the this is this is immediate <laughs> immediate if you have an anti-chain, you look at the characteristic vector. This is an element of the chain polytope. The intersection of this anti-chain with a chain is bounded by one, uh, so it uh, satisfies all the inequalities. And it's not negative, of course. And uh, again, it's a zero one vector in the corner of the cube. And therefore, a corner of this polytope. So this was pretty much the same. Now, uh, now for the second, uh, we look at some vector in the chain polytope, and we want to we want to uh, describe it as a convex combination of characteristic vectors of antichains. And uh, yeah, we interpret U uh, is awaiting on the elements of P with a property that the weight of a chain is bounded by one for for each chain. This is just another way of writing that uh, U is in the chain polytope. And what we are doing now is we produce a weighted anti-chain decomposition. This is this is very very much the thing that we that we did uh, in the exercises of on the first sheet. Uh, but I'm going to repeat the, the the thing. So what we what we do is we start with We define W0, the first weighting is just the U. And uh, we, the initial set we are looking for is a set as 0. This is the coordinates with the property that W0 of i is non zero. And uh, and what we do now is we look at the minima of this set. This is an anti-chain. We look at the minimum weight on this set. This will be the, the weight for this anti-chain. And we subtract this anti-chain with a given weight from, from the U. And we recurse. 
So in, in the general step, we have some wi minus 1 given and the si minus 1 is equal to the, uh, let's make it a j, to the coordinates with uh, wi minus 1 of j is not 0. And, uh, and now we now we do something, we define uh, ai is equal to the minimal elements of si minus 1. And now, uh, and now wi, uh, wait a second, yeah, first we need uh, Lambda i is defined as a minimum of the w i minus 1 of j with j being a member of this anti-chain a i. And then we define then we define the w i which is simply W i minus one minus lambda i times e of a i, and and of course s i is equal to the j with W i of j is zero. So this is the iteration we take, and. Uh, and now the observation, the first observation is that the SI, the size of SI is less than the size of SI minus 1. We have taken the lambda i as the minimum weight here. And if we subtract the lambda i e to the ai here, then, then the coordinate where this minimum is, is taken is turned to zero. So the process is is ending, and then uh, I'm I'm not going to detail this, but uh, so this terminates with st being some being the empty set. And then we have, and we have that the u is the sum uh, from one to t uh, lambda j lambda i e a i. So we have we have it written as a combination of the of these characteristic vectors. Now for the lambda i's we clearly have that the lambda i is non-negative because our initial weighting was non-negative. And uh, the the non-trivial, not, not so trivial thing is that the sum of the lambda i's is uh, actually the maximum of the u of C with uh, C uh, a chain in P. So the idea is, as, as in the in the proof of the dual of Dilbert theorem, where we built we built these uh, anti chains, and then we pick any element on the last anti chain. And we say it is in this last antechain because in the antechain below there is somebody who is covering, who is preventing it from, from being there. And then you pick this element and, and this way you go down through all the antechains. And the very same argument can be done here. And you, you, get, you, you end up with a chain whose weight is equal to the sum of the, of the coefficients here. And uh, and then to make it to make it one, we can 
at uh, at the empty empty chain with weight one minus the sum of the lambda i, and then we have then we have uh, coefficients which sum up to equal one. So we have a convex combination by by uh, vectors. Uh, this is not the empty chain. This is the empty empty chain. So each each vector used in the linear combination is a is a weighted a characteristic vector of an empty chain. Okay. So this is. The cor <coughs> sorry, the corners of the chain polygon. Um, so this is this is more or less uh, standard. Now we come now we come to a really nice theorem. This theorem by Stanley, 1968, and, and it has a very compact statement. The volume of the order polytope of P equals the volume of the chain polytope of the two polytopes we have we have defined they have the same number of corners and they have the same volume and uh, yeah so this is a surprising thing so the original the original proof of uh, Stanley was using Erhard theory, so he shows he shows that the uh, Erhard polynomials of the two polytopes are the same, and because the uh, because the volume is one of the coefficients of the Erhard polynomial, the volume has to be the same. But this is a rather technical approach, and we are not going to take it. But just to 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 not leave you with without anything here, uh, Stanley is using Erhard theory and. And here is the Erhard polynomial of a polytope Q in, in Rn, actually typically uh, it's for lattice polytopes. So you assume that the corners of the polytope are uh, inter integral points. And now if you have a lattice polytope, you associate to it the Erhard polynomial of Q and the evaluation on at an integer k is just the number of of integers, here we, here we uh, make it integers of the of of kq, where kq is just you take the the vectors and you scale them by k. So you 
with them, let them grow, and you take this intersection, and and somehow, uh, yeah, if you if you take a large k and uh, you divide, you take this value and you divide by by k to the n, then this will be a, an approximation of the volume. I guess you will see this. Uh, okay, but now we prove the theorem in a in a different way. So. What we do is we describe a map. Uh, we call it phi. And it's going from the order polytope of P, and its image is in the chain polytope of P. And um, yeah, this map is described in a in a bottom-up way. So we start with a point in the order polytope of P and we define define the Y in the, which is the image of X uh, bottom up what do I mean with bottom up? we, we take, pick any linear extension of P and we start computing uh, the Y coordinates along along the linear extension. And and here is the rule. Uh, yj is equal to xj if j is a minimum. And otherwise we take xj as a basis but we subtract the maximum value that we find on an i which is below j in p and we take the uh, value of xi. Okay, and now uh, the claim, of course, is that this, this y is an element of C of P. So we have to verify that if we take a chain and we restrict the Y to the coordinates of the chain and we sum up, then we get uh, at most one. So let, let I1, I2, IK be a chain. In P, and uh, and now and I I want to take a maximum chain. Because it's a maximal chain, I know that the the first element is a minimum, so y i1 is equal to x i1. And then I take uh, y i2, and this is equal to x i2 minus, by definition, the maximum of the i's below in p i2 x i. But because we are in a chain, this uh, I1 is one of the guys that we that we have here in this in this maximum. So uh, when we subtract the maximum, we subtract at least as much as we subtract when we subtract uh, just x I1. Yeah, and in general, x i j is 
Now, yij is the address equal xij minus xij minus 1. Okay, so now if we if we sum up yij for j equals 1 to k, and this is upper bounded by this xij minus xij minus 1. And now again we have a telescope sum and the only things that survive uh, are the well no for the first maybe we we think of xi0 being 0 so we get xik and the x is a point in the order polytope. So the value of xij is bounded by 1. And this shows that uh, our y is a point on in the chain polytope. Yeah. Um, and we can invert this. So for given something in the chain polytope, we can define x and uh, such that the phi of x is equal to y. And, and uh, the thing is again, again done bottom up along a linear extension. So um, we define xj equal to yj if j is a minimum of p. And we define it as yj plus the maximum of the axis that we can find below xi and uh, yeah so if you so the, the, the y's are non-negative so if you have a comparability and you take the maximum values that you see in the downset uh, of the guy and you add something non negative so it preserves the order relations so it is and it's between 0 and 1 so it will be in the order polytope and also if you compare the two definitions then from the two definitions it's clear that uh, if you obtain the y uh, as the image of x, and you get back to x. So it's the inverse. OK. Uh, now, what we, what we do next is uh, we, we, know, we know that the order polytope is a union of the order polytopes of the linear extensions. And we restrict our map on one of these linear extensions and, and look at what it is doing there. And um, map to 
all of pi. Uh, the observation, the key observation here is uh, let's let's see. Here is the definition of the map, and the key thing is that for every x which is which is in this in this uh, order polytope of p pi, we have the same ordering of the coordinates. And uh, and this is always taken by the same xi. So let xi the index, let's say i star, which with xi star equals the max i less than j xi. is the same for all the x. So you yeah. have to have j star there, maybe? No, uh, j star, yes, yes. The, the j should be, should, is the, the guy where I, I, I'm going to define the yj, so yes. It's a, it's a, from, from the J into the, okay, and now, um, this is telling us that on this, uh, in this restriction, our map is a linear map, and we can explicitly give the, uh, so on, is linear on of pi and we can explicitly give a matrix representation so this m pi can be written now we assume that the uh, coordinates are ordered in given by some linear extension um, well, we always have a 1 on the diagonal element and then if I, if I look at, I, I want to have m pi times x is equal to psi of x. So if I, if I multiply, I, I look at the uh, smaller guys yeah for some some reason uh, we look at the smaller guys being being above because we want to have them left so and then there is this uh, this minus one at, at a certain position which is uh, so this is a J star and this is this is J there's the image um, no the the YJ that is obtained by taking the XJ minus the XJ so you have some, some minus ones below the diagonal. One in each one in each uh, row which is not corresponding to a minimal element. The interesting thing, the thing that's relevant for us is that the determinant of M phi is equal to plus one. So it is volume preserved. And uh, now the, the different linear extensions, they form 
a triangulation of O of B. We have a we have a, a bijective map, and if we restrict to one of the simplices of the triangulation, then it's a linear map which is volume preserving. And and this shows uh, that the that uh, phi maps maps uh, triangulation actually not a Z triangulation, a simplicial decomposition of O of P to a triangulation of C of P. And uh, yeah, this, we get a bijection between these between these uh, simplices in this triangulation and this triangulation. Uh, the simplices have the same volume by by what we did here with the matrix, and uh, this shows that the volume of the chain polytope is the same as the volume of the ordered polytope. Yeah, um, just to to bring bring some some other aspects we have been talking about uh, back into into the business if we if we look at this x and we know that x is in the convex hull of some upsets of the corners corresponding to some upsets and um, and these upsets uh, they have their minima, minimal antichains, antichain of minimal elements. And we can map them to these antichains. And then the, uh, these antichains will again form a simplex. And by knowing how the X is uh, convex, com uh, the com convex combination of X as the uh, in the simplex given by these upsets, we can take the same uh, convex combination for the y in the in the simplex by the antichains, and this is the same map. This is the same uh, linear map uh, that we are using here. Okay, so we have we have. A Stanley theorem, and uh, this shows that instead of dealing with the order polytope, in some at least when when it comes to uh, counting linear extensions, we can also look at the chain polytope. And the chain polytope uh, for people working in, in in geometry is much nicer. From the from the order, order theory point of view, maybe maybe the the order polytope is is more natural, but uh, from the for, for people uh, working working in optimization and in, in geometry, the chain polytope has some advantages. The, you can name this advantage uh, advantage is that the chain polytope is a convex corner. And what we are going to do next is we are going to to uh, study convex corners and some operation called anti-blocker that works on convex corners.
Come the next corners. And empty blockers. So, what is a convex corner? So, um, a convex corner is a set is a set in R x plus. So, non-negative uh, ordinate and. Um, it has some additional properties. It is convex and compact, and it is and full dimension, full dimensional. And now, now this is something that's uh, interesting to us. It is, it is a downset in the product. Of So if you have a if you have a point in 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 a convex corner and you can look at the box spent by this point and the zero uh, of the space and this box will be contained in your convex corner. Yeah. So uh, to put it into context, C of P is a convex. It is a full dimensional polytope. This covers the first three uh, things, and uh, and it's a downset. If you have a if you have a point satisfying the inequalities of of the chain polytope, the sum of coordinates of a chain is at most one, and everything who has a smaller uh, coordinates will also satisfy. Okay, uh, now the next definition is the anti blocker. K okay, uh, convex corner, the anti blocker K star of K is given by. K star equals the set of points in the positive quadrant with the property that x transpose y is at most one for all y in k. <coughs> so you, you kind of put, a, put every element of K is, is upper bounding uh, the, the K star. And yeah, so observation K star is a convex point. So, so why is it? The key thing is that, that the y is a convex corner, meaning uh, the, the k is a convex corner, meaning that every vector y here has non-negative coefficients. So it is a it, it is a the, the inequality that we impose here is is an inequality which tells us you are living in this on this side and. Uh, all the inequalities that we have here are of this form. In addition, in addition, we have the, the positivity, the non-negativity constraints. And uh, from from this property here, uh, clearly, if you have a point, and then everything that's that's dominated here will also be living in this in this area. So. K star is a convex corner. 
And now, uh, when you have a convex corner, you can look at the anti-blocker. So we can look at k star star, which is simply k star star. And uh, yeah, one one thing that that's immediate is that k is a subset of this. So this is just another easy observation. I mean, um, this this statement here has you can say it has it has uh, two all pointers. For every x in k star, x transpose y is less equal 1 for all y in k. So, um, so the y in k is definitely somebody living in k, in the, in the anti-blocker of the anti-blocker. Now, the question is whether these two guys are the same, and uh, of course they are. Um, it uses this little proposition. So uh, k equals k double star. Now, suppose Then you find some point, which is, we, we already know this inclusion. So the only thing that we have to exclude is that we have a point in the, in the a double star which does not belong to the k itself. k double star minus k. Um, now, the k, is a convex object and the z here is a point and if you have a point if you have a convex convex set and you have a point which is not in the convex set and you can separate them by a hyperplane so uh, okay convex so it is the hyperplane separating Z and K. Now, uh, now the K is a, is a convex corner. And, and we have some some point outside and we and we have this uh, and we have a separating hyperplane and the, the thing that we are going to use now is that the separating hyperplane can be can be assumed to be a hyperplane which is given by a non-negative vector as a norm. So, uh, so the separating hyperplane has uh, is A transpose W equals one with W non non negative. Some something something like here. Um, now if you if you have this, then you then you find uh, 
that x transpose w is at most 1 for all x in k. After all, this is a separating hyperplane, and, uh, and we know on which side is k is living. The, the w is, is non-negative and the 0 is in k, so definitely this is the right side. But now, uh, what, is, what is this telling? This is telling us that the w is a member of k star. This is a definition of the anti-blocker. But now if W is in K star and we have uh, we, we have that Z transpose W is larger than 1 this tells us that the Z is not in K star star. And this is a nice contradiction because we were assuming it is there. So, so there is no vector Z like that. And the two are the same. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. We have a few minutes left and we can try to harvest something from this um, theory. Just, just erasing the statement that the uh, chain polytope is a convex corner, and uh, now clearly we are going to look at the anti-blocker of the chain polytope. And uh, yes, what what can we say here? By definition, this is the Z Z in Rx plus with the property that zt x less equal 1 for all x in the chain polytope. But now uh, now now this is a is again a polytope and uh, the polytope will have a finite set of uh, facets. And we can ask ourselves, what are the facet defining inequalities here? We have a, we have a continuum of inequalities. <coughs> we don't need all of them. We only need to look at the corners. When, you, when we have a corner, this would be a strong uh, inequality. Uh, or the other, in a, if you if you know that z satisfies the inequality for all the corners, then by convex combination, it satisfies all the inequalities. So it's enough to look at the corners. For all corners of Cp, and this is equal to uh, E of A and Ej. We have already studied the corners of the convex, of the, of the chain polytope. So, yeah. And, and this is why we call, we call it uh, A of P is defined as the anti-blocker of the chain polytope. Uh, this is 
the empty chain. Forty-two. And uh, yeah. Now we we are of course again interested in understanding the anti-chain polytope. Um, we kind of know the facets; they come from anti-chains. And what are the corners? Um, you may suspect that the corners correspond to the chains, and this is true. But the proof here is. Um, so if you if you go back to the proof that we gave uh, for the chain polytope, then we were using this uh, partition kind of kind of canonical anti-chain partition, weighted canonical anti-chain partition, and we have no corresponding uh, canonical chain decompositions. You you would have to decompose a weighted uh, structure into uh, weighted chains. This is not that easy. But we can we can uh, get to the result by looking at well, what is a star of p? Uh, a star of p is by definition a set of points here with x transpose y is at most one for all corners of a of p. So I'm already by the definition would be for all elements of A of p, but we we discussed this reduction to the essential uh, inequalities already. So it's enough to look at the corners here. But now we know that this is equal to C of p. This is uh, the <coughs> double anti-blocker. Uh, the double star is the convex corner again. So this is uh, this is the definition. And now, um, now every chain is. Uh, wait a second. What are we going to? What do we want to show? Um, Yeah, what we what we have to observe the E of C C a chain is a corner of A of P. This is as as usual the easy thing. You just uh, Find out that it is an element of the corresponding polytope. It is a corner of the of the cube, so it has to be a corner here. Uh, and now this equality, this here, here we have two things, two descriptions, and they are the same. Now suppose that A of P has another has additional corners. They would they would impose inequalities which are not covered here. So, uh, no additional corners. Otherwise, A star of P not equal C of P. Yeah, so this is a Compact proof of the corner structure of the anti chain polytope. Now I, I see that I'm already one minute in overtime. 
but I, I really want to show you a small, a small item. We are going to use a theorem from convex, from convex geometry. It's called uh, Saint Raymond theorem, and it says that the volume of K times the volume of K star is at least one over n factorial. Assuming that K is a convex corner in R to the n. Yeah, so this this we take as a as a black box, and now now we look at P two dimensional. And now we know that if you have a two dimensional poset. Uh, you have a conjugate, and the antichains of one are the chains of the other. So the antichain polytope of P is the same as the chain polytope of P bar, where P bar is the conjugate. And, uh, and we know that the antichain and the chain polytopes are, are antiblockers of each other. So we can we plug them in here, and we get and we get that the volume of C of P times the volume of C of P bar is at least n factorial, uh, one over n factorial. But now we call Stanley theorem. C of P, volume of C of P equals volume of O of P. And then we have the other result, that the volume of O of P is given by E of P divided by n factorial. So this is E of P times E of P bar divided by n factorial n factorial and we have a, a beautiful formula e of p times e of p bar is at least n factorial if p is dimensional. Yes, and this is this is really beautiful uh, the good end for today. Thank you.